What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? This episode of the podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Boostly. Now, you may remember episode 40 and 41 with Mark Simpson. He's the founder of Boostly, where we did a two-part series on the five steps for turning lookers into bookers. Mark is the king of direct bookings, and his company, Boostly, specializes in creating hospitality websites. Yes, for short-term rentals, boutique hotels, they specialize in building websites that turn lookers into bookers. So if you're in the market to get your own direct booking website and stop relying on all the OTAs like Airbnb and booking.com and paying them their commissions, you need a direct booking website and Boostly is the company to do that for you. They have several different options for you. They can build everything for you, do it all for you, or you can purchase one of their pre-designed templates and just fill in all your information. Okay. But the cool thing with Boostly is they are the only company to offer a 100% money back guarantee. Meaning whatever you pay for this package with them, if you do not make that money back with direct bookings, they'll give you your money back. So there is literally no risk for you. So make sure you guys go check out boostly.co.uk slash STR secrets. Again, that's boostly.co.uk slash STR secrets to learn more. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, E? Brother, it is 42 degrees outside today. I don't know how you live in the winter. Um, I look like a homeless man when I showed up at the gym this morning. I was wearing all the layers of clothes I could find in my house because I don't own a jacket. Um, But anyways, um, life is good. Real estate market is still crazy. Um, went down to Miami to uh, have a meeting with my with my broker down there yesterday. Um, and the opportunities that we've been talking about in the hotel space are are coming, right? So there is a lot of distressed properties and a lot of people that haven't adjusted as well as they maybe should have. Um, so yeah, very a couple of exciting projects. Some of them are, I, I feel are too large for our particular model, right? It's really finding the sweet spot as to like how we can um, really run them as vacation rentals. Um, but nonetheless, very exciting stuff. I met our friend from Clubhouse yesterday, Kevin, in person. So it was also amazing to bring one of those online relationships into into person and just talk to him about his brand and just his vision. And uh, so, yeah. I'm glad. I know you You got some interesting stuff cooking as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we're almost clear to close for the 22 unit uh, that we're supposed to close on March 5th. So just waiting on one more financing sign off. And then I got a call mm-hmm. yesterday to do, to partner on a, like a redevelopment kind of project where they're going to convert like a old Victorian, like four bedroom B and B into like a 10 to 11 room boutique hotel. So that, nice. that would kick off probably in the next month and then it'd probably be ready to open in the fall. So, I mean, right there, that's another 32 units. So things, things can happen pretty quickly. And we tell folks that like <laughs> it can scale. Yeah. And speaking of scale, I mean, the gentleman that we have on today is mm. like the definition of scale, by far the largest operator we have had on the show. Uh, so today we have Nikola Grubelik with us all the way from Croatia. Uh, he has a company called, uh, excuse me, Direct Booker. Yes, and he currently has uh, management of over 8,000 units in 11 countries through 22 different franchises. They are the world's top 10 property management company and a technology developer with the world's leading franchise model in the short-term rental vacation rental industry. Uh, and I am, I don't even want to keep reading. I want to bring him on right away and just dig into how did you get into this industry? And I really want to hear about this journey to scaling and franchising your model across 11 countries. Like that's amazing. So without further ado, welcome to the show. 
Thank you guys for inviting me in your show. It is a pleasure to, to be here. Absolutely. So tell well, us a little bit more about how you got started in the short-term rental industry. So basically, uh, let's say 13 years ago, I started uh, renting my apartment. I inherited one apartment and uh, um, I, I needed to make renovation of it, but I couldn't have, uh, I couldn't, I didn't have any uh, money to do that. So basically my idea was to rent it three months and to live in it uh, rest nine months. So basically I had idea uh, to make it uh, for the hostel guests uh, and um, to make some kind of uh, uh, two, two rooms with a shared bathroom inside of the apartment with the kitchen and everything. And uh, I put it on the uh, hostel road, hostel booker, hostel club. And basically that's how things started. Uh, I, could, I get reservations uh, and I booked every single day that I worked and I saw the opportunity there. And uh, also at that point, uh, there was no booking.com um, on, on the market. Uh, uh, booking.com at that time was only doing hotels. Uh, he didn't do vacation rental uh, like, like my, mine. So uh, I put uh, my units also on the some local web pages uh, that was at that time they, they were generating uh, uh, leads and uh, uh, when I when I had all the bookings at my spot I saw that um, I had too many inquiries that I couldn't do anything without we did with them and then I, I, I forward them to my uh, neighbors and uh, uh, I got uh, commission uh, from them and I saw that with this commission, I can earn even bigger money than renting my uh, apartment. So that's how things started. And uh, step by step, uh, when, I, when I got the, the biggest uh, commission, let's say of uh, 3,000 uh, 3, 3, kuna, that is, uh, uh, let's say, around 400 euros, I realized that if I do this 25 times again, I, I will have my yearly salary in, in the current uh, job that I was uh, doing. So that was the idea of uh, uh, how to start this business. And uh, then um, by uh, word of mouth uh, from my neighbors, uh, people were talking about my uh, business and what I am doing. And step by step, uh, I was getting inquiries from the uh, people who, who wanted that I uh, run their properties on the, on the, on the online uh, sites. And uh, step by step, I, I, I was generating uh, new properties. And uh, at the end of the first season, I had something like 35 uh, units, uh, 70 beds approximately. And uh, I was doing that uh, for the two years. And uh, during that time, I got the idea of starting the company and doing this on the larger scale. And I gave this idea to my uh, partner, Neil. Uh, and he, he realized that it could be really good uh, idea and possibility. But at that time, we, we were, um, let's say, focused on maybe on making some on, on making of OTA, because in that time, little pages were on, on their tops. Uh, and uh, we started this business and uh, step by step now we are uh, here. That's so. incredible. I mean, that is, that is incredible. So within your first year, you had 35 units. Yes, that's correct. Wow. And then you stayed there for, what did you say, about two years? And then you decided to scale it up from there? Yes, because I, I had my regular job uh, from eight to, to, to four. So I couldn't uh, grow this job. It was something that uh, it was there. I saw opportunity, but uh, I, I just wanted to see how this is going to scale. So if there is possibility of uh, making a business from this. So could you tell us a little bit more about all the different facets of direct booker because there's a it's almost like many companies with under that umbrella can you break that down yes so basically we are a vacation rental company uh, providing vacation rental solutions so we have a management uh, we have a technology we have a franchise model of our business and now we are going to have a booking site of the direct booker so Love basically that. we are four companies in one company under one umbrella. Okay. And how does, and, how does the franchise model work? Just out of curiosity, because 
I mean, franchises have been around a long time, but I have not seen anybody else do this at scale like you have with a franchise model. So how does, how does that look for you guys? So basically five years ago, when we saw that we, that we are building good business in our area, uh, uh, with my last job, I, uh, I was going all the time in a country next to us, Montenegro, and I saw, uh, uh, let's say, big big number of the units, a big uh, uh, opportunity there, but, and, but uh, I, um, we couldn't figure out what to do at that time. And basically, when we built business in, in, in our town, we decided to, to see if this business is going to be good in some other area, in some other town. And we went in one joint venture with, uh, with one uh, partner from Montenegro, and we saw that this business can be implemented in another uh, uh, country, in another town, in another region. And that was uh, cool for us uh, to go with the franchise model. That was the beginning. And uh, we, we build a franchise uh, model and step by step, uh, we build a, a number of the franchise units. So basically now we are in the 11 countries uh, and with 22, uh, 24 franchises because last two weeks we signed Portugal and Spain. And uh, we saw that uh, we, first of all, we need to have very good business model of our own and that to, to replicate that in the franchise business. Uh, why, we, why did we decide to go in the franchise, uh, franchise business? Because at one point, um, uh, 2018, we had 77 employees and we, and we were holding all Croatia and we saw that it's um, not good for us to, to, to run all country from one center because we saw that this that our branch, our niche is hyper local and that you need to be recognized by the people in your area, in your town, in your village. And we can do this from the Bronic. So we decided to give opportunity to our employers at that time in other towns to take franchise of Dyer Booker to, to be their own bosses, to have their own company, but work under our umbrella. And in that time, in that year, we che- we we had a, a new eleven franchises in creation. One point, basically, uh, we were holding all country, but we at, at the 2019 uh, uh, had a lower number of employees. We had a 30, 39, and also the the, the strongest part of um, our franchise accept our knowledge, our brand uh, is our technology because we started to uh, build our technology. Okay. So I, I love that. And this is such an interesting kind of conversation. So what, what, makes, what makes a franchise? So like what, what do they get? Like how does it work? Because I'm on your website right now and it doesn't look like like I can't as an owner go, like, it's not like Airbnb. I can go on there and put my own property on there and do it myself, right? I can only do it if I am part of the direct booker company. Is that how that works? Uh, so our websites now are under construction. So basically okay. <laughs> we, are, uh, we are making everything new. Why? Because uh, as business was growing, we didn't focus on the websites that, uh, the, uh, express on, with the right words what we are doing and uh, to, to, uh, ha- uh, the people to have a good picture what we what we are so mm-hmm. let's say in the uh, one month time everything will be clear online but I will explain you uh, now uh, so with the franchise model you are you are getting uh, our brand our name our know-how our technology and our support, business support and technical support. Basically, in um, in the in the in the franchise model, you we have a, a franchise concept manager who is leading you through every step of the French of the our business of vacation rental business. So, uh, our our uh, franchise is for the ones who would like to start um, vacation rental business. So if you have idea and you, you would like, you have, I don't know, five units, but you don't know how to come to the 50, you don't know, you, you don't have that knowledge about the business in total, you don't know how to do marketing, you don't know how to go do negotiations, you don't know, um, I, let's say, 
uh, how to scale on the right way and you don't know what technology is good for you we have it all and then so we are we are we are pushing you under under our brand with our knowledge with our technology with our support to scale and to be the good vacation rental management company on your area but under diary booker and also we are we are always doing networking because inside there is um, almost more more now more than 100 people and we are all sharing ideas informations from the uh, different markets and so this is what you get and also in the last uh, in life, last uh, let's say three four months um, um, companies who are on let's say around 50 60 100 units are contacting us because they see that they can't uh, fight with um, technology providers with the, they can fight with um, uh, competition and they don't know how to scale more now they scale to the some point but they are stop they stop now and they are uh, they are eager to scale but they don't know how so basically we are giving them possibility to um, transform themselves in the diary booker company in diary booker franchise company in on their area so got it that's it. so if somebody is on a diary booker so are they able to then do their own advertising and their own marketing to be on Airbnb and everything else? Or do you require them to become exclusively Diary Booker company, like uh, Diary Booker housing? So, you know, you are, you are, you are the, I, under the Diary Booker brand, under the, the umbrella. So you, you are doing marketing for yourself. We are doing global marketing, but you as a company are doing local marketing. Uh, you are doing presentations, shows and everything, but you are doing it under the Diary Booker. And we, that Diary Booker, our, our goal is to put our property owners on all major uh, sites. So basically, we are making other advertising on the Booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia, TripAdvisor, Agoda. Uh, now we are going to start to do on the uh, Google Hotel Ads, uh, Trivago, Holidu, and any other site. So that's the power of the Dire Booker. It's our own technology, our own PMS and channel manager who is getting stronger and bigger every day. And that is the um, engine uh, that is... Uh, um, giving us boost to go forward and our knowledge technology and, and the brand so that's that's what what we are and what how we are going forward gotcha gotcha i love that so it's <clears throat> i guess a a question on how the logistics of that work so are they like a traditional franchise are they buying in to get in and then is there some type of revenue share with direct booker to run that franchise Yes, that, that's correct. Gotcha. They, are, they are paying entrance fee to enter, enter in the system. And uh, uh, du during the onboarding, they are getting at the beginning 10 days of education, uh, negotiation, marketing, sales, distribution, getting know our technology and all other, other stuff. So basically they are not in the future. They don't, th don't need to think about anything. They get brochures. Uh, let's say around uh, 400, 4,000 pages of this business in written on, on, on the cloud. And they're just going step by step. If, you, if they have any issues, they are calling us because, because we have 365 days, we have technical support and we have uh, the, the franchise business manager who is taking uh, care of, uh, for them and uh, looking on their business to, to scale better. Uh, and also they are paying royalty, uh, monthly royalty according to the uh, uh, booking, booking state revenue. Gotcha. Gotcha. Are you helping them find the leads or you're basically teaching them to go find more properties or are you giving them properties? So basically if somebody is contact us uh, uh, and this lead is from the territory that we have a franchise, we are providing this, that lead, but uh, we are doing global marketing as a diary booker. And uh, but we, the, the, our franchisees, they need to do local marketing to, to gain leads. We are teaching them how to do so. So if you want to make presentation, I don't know, 
for 100 people. We have all the procedures how to do that. So how to make a banner, uh, how to make presentation, how many people need to be on the presentation, what are the topics of presentation, and uh, let's say questionnaire later, and all the procedure how to do that from the beginning to the end. This is one step. And also Google AdWords, uh, uh, Facebook booths, so everything, you are covered with everything basically. Awesome. So when you guys, I think this is this could be a very interesting uh, kind of topic for, for our audience, right? Um, it's so you help them also come with with the content for them to do presentations. So what when you are teaching them, where who are they presenting to? So do they go to present at local local business clubs or or where are you? What are you guys teaching there? So we are in this business for for ten years as a company. Myself, I'm twelve years, thirteen. I don't know. <laughs> so. Basically, we pass all the things that from the from the beginning to now. This is ever changing industry, so we mm -hmm. know where where you need to go uh, and, and to find the leads. So basically, we, in 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 our in our town in in our country, um, you get you have tourist boards. You contact the tourist board. You tell them uh, who who you are. You would like to do a presentation. Uh, they say okay. We will contact uh, uh, all the uh, folks that we have in, in our database and then uh, you are, you are taking, uh, let's say, uh, one hole uh, for a presentation and then you are getting them around and giving them a presentation of uh, how to be better vacation rental owner and how to do better job. And basically and then you are providing them solution. You are the one of the solutions. Your management is one of the solutions. Our technology is one of the solutions. So basically, we have everything. And also, there are different other types how to, to collect leads. Uh, now, we are just making one webinar. And uh, in that webinar, uh, we are going to uh, give our thoughts how to do business in this um, um, uh, time of the crisis. And let's say for now, we have 70 people who are engaged uh, for this webinar who will be in the, in the next uh, seven days. So, and when you are presenting yourself, then some of these 70 will become your uh, partners. Got it. Awesome. Gotcha. So they're doing educational webinars and, you know, face-to-face, -face, basically trying to get in touch with property owners to show them how much they could make as a short-term rental. Yes, that, that's correct. And uh, we have different tools how to engage pr uh, uh, property owners to contact us to uh, uh, provide uh, us the information about their property to ask how they can earn and what is the way of uh, our, our work with them. So we are getting lots of inquiries uh, every day. Love that. I love that. What so, are you, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. I'm just curious on the journey. What did it look like? What was that middle point when you went from 35 to now over 8,000? What was what did that look like? Kind of that middle ground, that initial scale, and then it takes off. Like what what was that journey? Uh, let's say that uh, Booking.com uh, is the uh, the one who who we need to blame about about our uh, growth. Because when we started this business, uh, Booking.com was in the hotel industry. And basically, uh, at that point uh, in our town, there was uh, 137 properties on the Booking.com. And uh, we were among the, the first ones uh, with uh, uh, vacation rental uh, uh, homes that get in the Booking.com. And then, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the properties that we put there, uh, oh, they they explode. They they had too much reservations because there was no too many uh, properties at all on the booking.com. So everything you put, you get the reservation. Uh, I don't know ten a day. It was a crazy time. And uh, then people realized that, that we are the ones because booking.com was uh, at that time something new. And they realized that we are the ones who will put them on the booking.com. And basically this is how the things started. And uh, step by step, uh, uh, some recommendation from the property owner to another property owner, people were uh, coming to us. And also we opened uh, our first uh, uh, 
uh, agency at one street and people were entering with their apartments every day, we would get five, six new uh, acquisitions and we boost very easily. So I don't know, in some, let's say, I, I believe that 2000, uh, 16, we gained one, one, one year over the 1,200 units, something like that. So it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. That is, get, that is crazy. One guy just was uh, signing the, the, the uh, properties, uh, putting everything on, on the site, and then just in the five minutes, 10 minutes, new reservation will come for that property. So it was a big... Uh, I know booking.com was growing, we were growing, then then Airbnb appeared, then so this is the, the case. How did the how did the growth from an infrastructure from your team standpoint when you were running everything yourself with 35 units? Now you said you're at what 77 employees? Uh, now we are uh, it, in direct uh, booker as a, as, a, as a main company. We are running 3,500 uh, and we have uh, 43 employees now here in the, in the headquarters. But in total, we have 100 with all franchisees. So each franchisee, is there kind of a rule of thumb? Like how many employees do they have? Or is it, you know, outsourcing cleaners and, con- and contractors and things like that? Like what does their kind of blueprint look like from a team? So basically, um, from it, it is a company of one person to five. That's uh, how our franchisees operate. And uh, they have outsourced partners regarding the, the cleaning, maintaining, and the check-in. Also, we, as a, as a main company, we are organizing maintain, maintaining, cleaning, uh, uh, check-in without, uh, with our outsourced partner. Before, four years ago, we had a company uh, and we were running 200 uh, uh, properties uh, by ourselves. But we saw that it's very hard to grow in the both ways and we decided to, to uh, give this company to our friends. They are going to work this part. We are going to uh, uh, focus ourselves on, the, on, the, uh, on, on our core and on technology. Got it. So do you, do you own any properties that you guys run yourself or you're just now exclusively in the management and the software side? We, only, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have any uh, properties. We don't own anything as a company. So we, are, we are just working on the revenue share model. So we don't lease anything. Gotcha. I love this because I, I've been a big, E and I have been big advocates of the revenue share model for years. And it, at least in the US, the rental arbitrage or master lease has been really big. And I've always been a huge advocate for the revenue share because it's just, a, in my opinion, a win-win overall, like where we can scale faster because we're not paying for furniture and things and the owners make more money. So it's just, it's just a win-win. And to see you guys scale that to over 8,000 units globally now, I mean... That's incredible. Um, so for you, I mean, what's the vision going forward for you guys? Like, where do you see Direct Booker going? So our vision is that uh, we, we scale our business with our franchise uh, model, let's say around 300 franchisees in the next five years. That was that would be our goal. We want to come in every 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 town locally with our franchise partner. Uh, our, our goal is to grow our technology to the highest possible level, to be number one technology for the property managers. Why? Because uh, uh, our Booker Tools is, called, is the name of our technology. It's the PMS and channel manager that, that is the engine of the direct booker. So basically, if uh, Booker Tools is the engine of the Diary Booker, uh, world's top 50 uh, vacation rental company, then it's suitable for any, every other company to, to make automatization of their business, uh, to make good distribution. And uh, we see our growth in the franchise model and in technology. So. Uh, I believe that our goal also is uh, regarding technology to have 500 uh, partners in the next three years. Um, and we, when we, what I mean with the partners, I mean 500 pr- property managers uh, like ourselves 
from the professionals, from the 50 units, if they are running to the, let's say, 2,000 units. So that, that's our goal. Because when we, how we are building this technology, we are not IT company. We are a vacation rental company who has nine IT engineers inside of our, in, in our uh, company. And they are doing only one thing. They are making our tool better and better. So that we, every, every step of the way that we are uh, doing manually, we want to do automatically. So basically this is how we are building uh, our technology from the view of the property manager, not from the view of the IT company who sees pos a possibility of earning good money on the vacation rental market. No, we want to make the best tool for ourselves and then we want to pass this tool to any other property manager. Gotcha. Gotcha. So is the technology just for the franchisees or are you looking to sell the technology like as a property management system? We want to sell it as a property management system and uh, we started uh, 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 let's say sale uh, from the 1st of the November. I know it's now hard time to sell anything uh, because of the pandemic and the crisis, but uh, we formed a group of um, uh, three people and we call uh, this uh, uh, team a uh, global uh, partnership team and uh, we are contacting uh, property management uh, companies daily and uh, providing them information about our tool and uh, the models we have and how we can help them to scale with a good technology built from the top 50 uh, uh, vacation rental company in the world. So That's amazing. Um, I love that you brought up earlier the fact about how you're training your people in the next webinar is about how to adjust and work through what's going on with COVID. Um, so I would love to kind of, you know, I know Europe has been a lot different here in the US. So I kind of love to hear your opinion on where you see the market going in the sense of vacation and, and just some useful tips that our listeners can also implement in their business has to how how to kind of beat what's what's going on and just keep getting bookings so let's say that first advice uh, would be flexibility so we need all of us to understand that nobody is going to pay anything now in this uh, situation and we are the world is in lockdown so nobody is going to give one euro one one dollar so we need to be flexible to the maximum as possible to understand on the other part and to give them, them confidence that their money or reservation is a safe case. Either if they pay, we need to give them the possibility to return them the money if they can't travel or won't travel because of, of this situation. That's the first thing. Second thing is uh, to uh, make your listings uh, the best possible to provide the customers the information about the cleaning, maintaining, providing the, the biggest standard and they need to feel that they are in the safe hands and the distribution is also key. So you need to be at uh, as many channels possible uh, and also the right price. Uh, you can't wait to the last moment and be sure that somebody is going to pay you the price from the 2019 that's not going to happen. And so you need to listen to the market carefully uh, because uh, I, I think that the recovery will not go from like we, it's going to be two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. So basically you need to listen to the market very well and to do uh, actions regarding the price at the right moment, not to wait till the end and say, okay, in the last minute I will, go 50% uh, lower than this price. No, you, you will pass even better if you do earlier uh, action and go with the price uh, uh, lower. So basically the combination of, of all of this uh, will, uh, will uh, uh, be the key of the success. Love that. I love that. Yeah, well, this is some great tips. Yeah, I mean, this, this has been fascinating and I, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, first off, where can folks learn more about Direct Booker and all the different offerings that you guys have? 
So basically, they can uh, visit our websites, but uh, as I told you, they will not uh, uh, find uh, uh, many things because we are in the uh, restrictions of the of the website. But basically, they can contact us. They can see uh, on many websites about diary book and everything. Um, I'm always uh, me and my team. We are always here at the disposal for any anyone who is uh, who has interest for this business, who is, has interest to start. Uh, this business or about diary booker and how to become diary booker franchise or just to see our technology so uh, they can contact us on uh, you can you can share my uh, website my email anything so uh, I, i'm always at disposal regarding uh, any kind of interests i love that yeah we'll be sure to include all the links and everything in the show notes um, so the last question that we like to ask all of our guests, and I'm, I'm really excited to hear what your response is going to be based on your scale. What is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? I would say hard work, definitely hard work, hard work and, uh, uh, long working day. So basically, uh, I come here, uh, at eight o'clock in the morning and, uh, go from the, uh, um, from the office and uh, eight nine in the evening. So uh, all all working day. I, I want to uh, use all day to make things happen because if you are working regularly eight days eight eight hours uh, a day, I don't know if you can scale so much. But if you give all yourself and you are putting one hundred thirty percent of you uh, and you you are. Um, spending all the time thinking about the job even when i come home i my wife is always screaming at, at me but i'm always on the phone looking linkedin looking emails and thinking about a job so basically this is 24 hours uh, putting yourself in the business and if you do that hard work uh, uh, things will happen and you will get payback at the end definitely love it i love it well nicola thank you that, again so much for coming advice. on here and being with us and I love that tip because yes, you can make a lot of money with this business and yes, you can automate a lot of things, but I do not want to downplay that it takes a lot of work to build it up. Like no yeah. matter how you dice it, right? So I always ask people, yeah. why do you want to start this business? There's a million businesses you can start. So why, why this business? What is your goal? And if that why and that goal is big enough and strong enough, you can do it. You just got to, like you said, you got to work hard and you got to stay persistent. You've been in this 13 years. So like, yeah, people are going to see, oh my God, he's got over 8,000 units. But I'm sure that journey was not always smooth sailing. <laughs> I can guarantee it was not always smooth sailing, right? And, and I guarantee you overcame a lot. Yes, definitely it's hard now. But uh, in this period, we focus ourselves to think about the business, to see what we need to change when things uh, change with the COVID and the reservation against stars and the uh, uh, market uh, is going to be alive again to be the best possible in that moment. Because of that, now we are putting additional effort when uh, things are um, sl uh, going slow and everything is quiet. But when things are going fast again, we want to be the best possible. And definitely uh, this effort that is that we are putting now, all the team, even in this very hard times is going to, uh, to pay back us as a company. And we, we see the, that coming. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is an amazing little tip because I think everybody is worried about that. But the reality of all the big operators is that we all know that this is going to pass, right? So hotels are still looking at hotel locations because at the end of the day, if you're going to stop completely to then restart, it takes a lot, a lot more gas to restart something instead of having something continue running through the entire time and focusing on like, okay, once this is all over, where are we going? What service are we, are we looking to give? And, and what can we learn from? Because also the great news about now is that some people are going to leave, leave the market. And if you're there to catch the stuff that they leave, you can really add a lot of units and uh, Nicola, you remind me of, uh, I watched this interview with Elon Musk the other day and he's like, where are you sleeping tonight? And he's like, in the factory. And he's like, why? He's like, because it saves me time, right? So that's kind of, <laughs> I can see you sleeping on that couch back there on some long nights where you're like, 
creating and building stuff. And, um, and that's such an important message with this, with this business is that you can really grow it to, you know, do four or five units and just replace your income or do 8,000 units like Nicola is doing and really create something that doesn't have a limit past what you're willing to or willing to do. So I, it's super inspiring and I love, I love the business model. I had never seen a business model like that for the vacation rental space. Um, so you definitely gave me a lot of things to kind of think about. Thank so you very much. Great having you on, man. Thank thank you. Much. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for being here. Let's definitely keep in touch and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Right. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.